Up next, we have lesson 3.2. Um, this is in your notes packet on pages 4 and 5. Remember, we're in the unit 3 equations note packet now. So this is lesson 3.2, the distributive property and factoring. So the distributive property uses multiplication to distribute a number to a set of numbers or variables that are inside parentheses. So algebraically speaking, you have your number outside, you are multiplying, and this A is going to get multiplied to the B and also to the value of the C here. And we're going to have to be careful because this symbol, the plus or the minus that's in front of the C, is going to actually go along with it. So it's going to be super important for us to pay attention to. I like to think about distributive property um, problems as like a mailman because the mailman comes around and delivers all mail to all the different residents in a neighborhood or community or whatever, and they put the mail into all the different mailboxes. So distributing is you're going to be putting mail into all the mailboxes of the ones inside parentheses. So distributive property, remember you're multiplying because the six is bumped up to parentheses. So we're going to multiply 6 times x, and then we're going to multiply 6 by the 6, and it's going to be important for us to note that it's a positive 6. So 6 times x, in math class, we don't actually put the dot in between anymore. We're just going to put the coefficient, which is the number, bumped up next to the variable, and that's telling us 6 times x. 6 times x, and then we're going to do 6 times a positive 6, which will give us a positive 36. Now, when we actually read this answer, we have 6x plus 36. X's, this is a variable, so there are six of these, and then there's 36 that are just plain old what we call constants. Variables and constants cannot be added together. So this is your final answer. It is an expression, and that's your final answer. There's no equal sign here. There's nothing else that you can do. In the next one, we're distributing the 5 to the X and the 5 to the plus 4. So 5 times X is 5X. 5 times a positive 4 is a positive 20. So your answer here is 5x plus 20. In number 3, we're going to distribute the 6 to the x and the 6 to the plus 8. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times plus 8, or positive 8, is a positive 48. Last example, I'm going to have you go ahead and distribute this 9 to the y and also be careful to the negative 8. 9 times y is going to be 9y, and 9 times a negative 8 is going to give us a negative 72. So we actually read this as 9y minus 72, but that 72 has that negative sign in front of it. A couple more problems just to practice this with. I'll do the first one, and then we'll kind of go from here. So the first one has some negatives. We have a negative 4 out front. We're multiplying by a negative x, and we're also multiplying by a negative 3. Negative 4 times negative x, integer rules, that results in a positive 4x. Negative 4 times negative 3, negative times a negative would give us a positive, and our number is 12. In the next example, we have 6 times 2x and 6 times a positive 4. 6 times 2x, so basically that's saying 2x, 2, 2x, 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 2x. So that would actually result in 12 x's. So you just multiply the 6 times the 2. And then you do 6 times the positive 4, which will give you a positive 24. The next one, I'm going to have you go ahead and try this one. Distribute the 1 half to the 4x and also to the positive 6. 1 half times 4x, half of 4 is going to give you 2x, and half times a positive 6 would give you a positive 3. Take a look at example number 4. Go ahead and distribute the 3. 3 times 8x, 3 times a negative 9, so you should get 24x minus 27. Example 5 has a lot of negatives. I'm going to have you go ahead and practice with that. Negative 3 times a negative 2x, and negative 3 times a negative 4. That will give you a 6x plus a 12 then. In example 6, distribute the 8. 8 times 4m is going to give you 32m and 8 times a negative 3 would give you a negative 24. Eventually, you should be getting to the point now where you don't actually have to draw all these loops, but I just will keep doing them until the end of our notes for today. In the next one, we're going to do 1.25 times x and 1.25 times negative 4. As a reminder to you, you are welcome to use your calculator in this chapter, in this unit, so that's fine if you want to pick up your calculator. 1.25 times a negative 4 is going to give us a negative 5 here. So you could actually just do 1.25 times 4 and then put that negative sign before it. That's fine.
The next one is 0 0.75 times 16x and times a negative 24. I'm going to have you go ahead and do this one. So 0 0.75 times 16 is going to give you 12x. And then 0 0.75 times that 24 is actually going to give you minus 18 then. Last example, we have 1 tenth times 50 and 1 tenth times a 30. So it's going to give me 5x plus 3. So that's how you do the distributive property. If you flip over to page 5 in your notes packet, we have another process that's called factoring. And factoring basically undoes the distributive property. So once you distribute, you get that expression. And if you have an expression, you're able to actually factor out what are the common factors. Common factors are kind of like what we used to reduce our fractions before, only now instead of looking at a numerator and a denominator, we're going to look at two different terms that are part of our expression. The process of distributive property I call to be like the mailman. The process of factoring I call to be like a trash truck because the trash truck comes around the neighborhood and collectively it takes everybody's trash then. So just like we're going to go from this expression that's right here and we're going to take its trash. What does everybody have in common here? So if I look at 4H and I look at an 8, I notice they're both even, but I also notice that between the 4 and the 8, they have a common factor of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that 4 out. And now I'm undoing distributive property. 4 times what is going to get me that first expression of 4h? So I would have to multiply 4 times h to get 4h. What would I multiply to get 4 times what would give me a positive 8 then? So 4 times a positive 2 would actually get me to that positive 8. So if I factor, I get 4 parentheses h plus 2, I can distribute back and I get 4 times h, 4 times a positive 2, and when I distribute back, I should be back to my original that I got as my first expression. So this is the distributive property, you factored out a 4. So we're going to look at the first one here. We have a 40p plus 50. So the biggest common factor that these two numbers, 40 and 50, have in common would be to factor out a 10. And if I look at this, I'm going to have 10 times what will get me to 40p? Well, to do 10 to 40, I would have to multiply by 4. And to get that p in there, I also need to have a 4p listed out here. 10 times what is going to get me to positive 50? Well, that would be a positive 5. And if I go ahead and distributive property, 10 times 4p, 40p, 10 times positive 5, positive 50. Take a look at number 2. I have 30 plus 30j. The numbers are the same, so I can actually factor them out. So inside parentheses, 30 times what is going to get me to 30? That would be times 1. 30 times what is going to get me to a positive 30j? So we're going to have to put plus, and my number would be 1, and I still need to include the j. In math, we don't write 1j, so our best final answer would look like this for this expression. Take a look at number 3. I'm going to have you factor out what is the biggest common factor between 30 and 20. So if you said 10, that would be correct. 10 times 3 will get you to 30, and you need to multiply by the x. 10 times a positive 2 will get us back to 20 then. Question number 4, I'm going to have you try this one as well. What's the biggest common factor that you can pull out between the 4 and the 16? 4 is the biggest factor, so we're going to do 4 times x and 4 times a positive 4. So your expression is 4 times the quantity x plus 4. One of the applications that we can do here is if we're given a perimeter of a square, we know that the square has four equal sides. So what we would need to do is we're not just going to factor out the biggest factor now. To figure out the length of each side, we have to factor out a four. It's a little bit different than just regular factoring. But if we factor out a four, four times 4x will get me to 16x, and 4 times a positive 6 will get me to that po positive 24. So each side of my square is 4x plus 6. And if I were to add those all together, I would end up with 16x plus 24 in the end. So that's the end of your lesson for distributive property and factoring.